Hi, I'm Wave from Seabound Vapor, and today we'll be looking at the staple coil. There's a handful of things today that we'll be looking at, so first we'll go over what we need. For this coil, I'm going to be using 0.4 ribbon wire and 40 for the fuse. With the method I'll be using today, we're going to be needing four strips of fairly long wire because we're going to be doubling this over. So however long you want your finished wire to be, cut four strips, double that length. Once you have your four strips, make sure that they're all roughly the same size. You can cut them after folding them, that's fine as well. But we're going to be taking them, we're going to be running them through one end of the swivel, and we're going to be folding it over until it's as close to half as possible. After that, we're going to be cutting off any twisted or stray ends so that it fits nice and smooth. Once everything is inside of the swivel, we'll be folding it over and stacking them. Uh, the process of just making sure they all lie flat on top of each other. For this, we'll be starting at the swivel end, trying to stack them as best we can, and we'll be running our fingers down until the end, and once they're fully stacked and you can get it as tight as possible, we'll be using a glue stick. You can use a glue gun if you have one. I personally prefer to use just individual glue sticks and a torch I have. I'll be applying the glue slightly before the swivel where we have it folded over, and once we have it all the way down, I'll be applying a little bit more glue a little bit before the very end since we're going to be using that to stick it into the chalk. Inserting it into the chalk, we'll be using the bent legs at the end, making sure not to get the glue inside of the chalk. After that, we'll be pulling it moderately tight, and then we'll be getting ready for the next step. At this point, we'll be inserting our fuse wire into the chuck or attaching it to one of the lights, whichever method you prefer, and it's going to go ahead much like the fuse clapton or clapton coil, but you're going to want to be using a fairly loose grip on the spool. Uh, this is to make sure that the ribbon doesn't fold over on itself due to pressure. Make sure to take your time and proceed at a pace you're comfortable with. And again, this is very much like the fuse clapton and clapton, so if you know how to do those, this isn't too much harder. Once we reach the end, we'll just be snipping it off before the glue and we'll continue on with the rest. Upon wrapping the coil, uh, some people might find it more useful to insert the actual wire itself into a vise and using that to hold it because you're going to be wanting a lot of consistent pressure. Letting it go even slightly will cause the ribbon to bend to the side and kind of ruin everything. I'm going to show it. I normally don't like to show any kind of failures. That, that wasn't the plan. But I messed this up pretty badly just to show you if you don't use perfect consistent pressure, uh, this can and will happen. Now the best way to avoid this is again either use a vise, a solid grip, or kind of running your thumb while you're wrapping, just keeping that pressure on it to kind of force the metal to bend. Because unlike with round wire, you are folding it on its edge. So you need that pressure in order to stop it from bending over to try to accommodate what you want it to do. You need to force it. So after going back to the drawing board, so we I went ahead and clapped that up off screen. And here I'm trying to hold as much pressure as I possibly can. And as you can see here, it coils way better. This will be the first installation you guys will see from me in a post list deck. Uh, what you want to do beforehand is kind of measure it out using a coiling tool or just inserting it, cutting it down, inserting it, cutting it down until it fits properly where you want it to. I went ahead and cut out two coils and I'm inserting it in. We'll install it as normal, making sure to uh, fit it properly, then work out any hot spots and whatnot using our tweezers and the coiling rod. The pros and cons for this coil are very much similar to the fused Clapton. Uh, the only real difference being that instead of a very rounded oval shape as uh, on the profile, it is much more square. That's kind of the point of the coil. It looks like a line of staples and such is named. Throughout the actual coil itself, it has many small channels running through it uh, due to the divots between the actual pieces of ribbon which gives it a little bit of a better flavor. And due to the shape itself, it has slightly more mass than a fuse clapton of a similar size. These are also known to have really nice ramp up times and they perform pretty well. The main con being working with wire is much more difficult and it takes more time and precision to do, as well as much more prone to failure and the wrapping process itself is much more difficult. Once everything's tuned up, we'll go ahead and insert our cotton. You sit up and you're ready to go.
The main tips I have for this is when stacking the ribbon itself, I haven't really tried it a whole lot myself, but people recommend using uh, just water on your fingertips, even just like a bottle cap so you can dip your fingers. Kind of helps it stick together better. Actually in coiling it, again, using a vise or pliers or something to hold it taut while you wrap, that's been known to be really helpful. Doing it barely by hand, like I did in this video, isn't the most recommended way. So take whatever steps you feel you need to in order to get that perfect wrap, because these are fairly costly coils if you mess them up wire-wise. And the last thing I would have to say about them is that when you're doing out your stack, like the, the ribbon lines for the stack, you're going to want to make sure that they are tight and together, and you're going to want to make sure that stack is, again, as perfect as you can make it. Pulling taut on it, making sure that you run two fingers and separate angles, so one clamping the flat sides of them and one clamping the edges. And you kind of run your hands down. You can give them a little bit of a wiggle while you're working your way down, and that kind of helps work out any stray wire. Thank you to everyone in the video who submitted pictures for this week's build. You can check me out at Seabound Vapor. If you want your builds featured in an episode, you guys can send an email to that's.a.rap.vape at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap.